let us try solving this question from signals and system gate uh, 2020 electrical paper the causal realization of a system with transfer function hfs having poles at minus 2 1 2 minus 1 and zeros at 2 1 and minus 2 minus 1 will be the options are stable real all pass unstable real high pass unstable complex all pass stable complex all pass now the poles of the system are at minus 2 1 and 2 minus 1 these are the poles and the zeros are at 2 1 and minus 2 minus 1 now if we try to plot the pole zero plot of this system in the s plane the pole zero plot will look like this this will be the pole zero plot this is the real part of s this is the imaginary part of s this is s plane these are the two poles and these are the two zeros now if you realize in the question he's mentioned the causal realization of a system he's mentioned this this is the keyword here the causal realization of a system for the system to be causal always the condition on ROC is this is the condition for an ROC for a system to be causal the ROC should be right of the rightmost pole here the rightmost pole is 2 minus 1 the right of the rightmost pole means sigma greater than 2 will be the corresponding ROC for the system now if the ROC is sigma greater than 2 that means the ROC does not include the j omega axis because sigma greater than 2 means this side is the ROC this side is the ROC that means ROC does not include this axis that is the j omega axis if ROC does not include the j omega axis this system is unstable so the first keyword for the system is this system is unstable now if we move further for this system if you observe the poles and zeros are not in conjugate pairs specifically the complex poles and zeros this is a complex pole if you observe but they are not in conjugate pairs this 2 minus 1 does not have its conjugate pair similarly this 0 does not have a conjugate pair since the complex poles and zeros are not in conjugate pairs this system is not real because if this system was real its poles and zeros would have been in conjugate pairs that means this system is not real that means the system has to be a complex system now the next point of observation here is if you observe for every pole for every pole there is a symmetric zero about the j omega axis for every pole there is a symmetric zero about the j omega axis and vice versa vice versa means for every zero there is also a symmetric pole about the j omega axis this is a property of an all-pass filter therefore this system is also an all-pass filter so the combinational answer for this question would be this is a system which is unstable because the ROC does not include the geometric axis complex because the poles and zeros are not in conjugate pairs and all pass filter because there is symmetry with respect to poles and zeros about the geometric axis so this would mean the option C would be the correct answer to this question stable complex and all pass filter now let us try solving a question 2 from your gate paper this is a question 2 from your gate paper this question says uh, which of the following is true for an LTI discrete time system that obeys the difference equation this is a difference equation given the system is necessarily causal the system impulse response is non-zero at infinitely many instants third point is y of n is unaffected by the values of x of n minus k for k greater than 2 the fourth option is x of n is equal to 0 for n less than 0 the function y of n for n greater than 0 is solely determined by the function x of n so uh, let us try to rewrite this difference equation this is the difference equation y of n minus a y of n minus 1 is equal to b0 x of n minus b1 x of n minus 1 I'll just try to write for just y of n. I'll try to take a y of n minus 1 to the other side. Once I take a y of n minus 1 to the other side, this is the equation y of n is equal to y of n minus 1 plus b0 x of n minus b1 x of n minus 1. Now, if you observe here, 
y of n is a present output, y of n minus 1 is a past output, x of n is a present input, x of n minus 1 is again the past input. So, the observation point here is the present output that is y of n only depends upon the past output y of n minus 1, the present input x of n and the past input x of n minus 1. This is a very clear cut property of a causal system. That means since the present output depends only on the past output, present input and the past inputs, this system should be necessarily causal. So, uh, this should be answer to this question should be option A. The system is necessarily causal. Let us try the next question from signals. For an LTI system, x of t convolved with h of t is given as y of t. Further, if mod of x of t convolved with mod of h of t is given as z of t, which of the following is true is asked? z of t is greater than or equal to y of t for all t. Option B, z of t is less than or equal to y of t for all t. Option C is z of t is greater than or equal to y of t for some values of t. And uh, option D is z of t is greater than, uh, less than or equal to y of t for some values of t. Now, if, uh, this is the expression for y of t given. y of t is equal to x of t convolved with h of t. Now, let us try to write the convolution expression for y of t. This is the convolution expression for y of t. y of t is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of tau mod x of tau h of t minus tau d, t, d tau. Similarly, let us try to write the expression for z of t. z of t is given as mod of x of t convolved with this is mod of uh, h of t. This is mod mod of h of t. This is mod of x of t convolved with mod of h of t. Now, if we try to write the generalized expression, it will look like this. z of t is equal to mo minus infinity to plus infinity mod of x of tau mod of uh, h of t minus tau d tau. This is the expression. Now, if you observe, integration is nothing but area under the curve. Integration is nothing but area under the curve. Now, what is the integrand here? Integrand here is a modulus value. Integrand here is a modulus value means here z of t is just finding out this value, this modulus value can only take positive values and integration is nothing but finding out area. That means z of t is nothing, out, nothing but finding out the positive area. Only positive area is possible for z of t. That would mean, this is the result, z of t will conclude, will give us only positive area. But what about y of t? y of t does not, this z, x of tau into h of t minus tau can either take positive or negative values. That means y of tau, y of t can be a combination of both positive and negative. That is y of t could be both positive and negative area. That means if you are finding out positive area means that will give us a fixed value. But y of t which can take both positive and negative means it will always be, z of t will always be greater than or equal to y of t for all t because when there is a combination of both positive and negative area, it can mutually reduce the total value. The positive area and the negative area will get subtracted. It can reduce the total value. So that means y of t value can will always be or, or other way around means z of t value will always be greater than or equal to y of t for all t. That should be the answer. That means it is option A is the correct answer. Now, uh, let us solve the next question from signals. Which of the following is true for a two-sided Laplace transform? Option A is no poles exist for any bounded signal that is non-zero inside a finite interval. It exists for every signal that may or may not have a Fourier transform. If the signals can be expressed as weighted sum of shifted one-sided exponentials, then the Laplace transform has no poles. Finite poles equals finite zeros. So, for this question, if you observe option A, it mentions about a finite duration bounded signal. There is a good result for a finite duration bounded signal. It is a standard result which says, which meant, let us try solving the next question from signals. X of n is equal to half to the power of n into u of n is given, where u of n is equal to 0 for n less than 0 and u of n is equal to 1 for n greater than or equal to 0. 
z transform of x of n minus k is given as z to the power of minus k divided by 1 minus half z inverse uh, then the roc of this particular x of n minus k signal is asked mod z less than 2 mod z greater than half mod z less than half mod z greater than 2 these are the options now if, <coughs> let us try to write the signal x of n x of n signal is half to the power of n into u of n and this being a right sided signal because u of n is being multiplied this is a right sided signal and since this is a right sided signal the roc of a right sided signal is right of the port that is this being a right sided signal the right of the pole means mod z greater than half is the roc for this signal now roc of this signal is not what is asked but roc of x of n minus k is asked so roc of the signal x of n minus k is asked but we know standard result in terms of laplace transform that even if a signal is shifted that is x of n is shifted to x of n minus k the roc does not change that means even for the signal x of n minus k roc does not change on shifting therefore even for the signal x of n minus k the roc would be mod z greater than half that will be the answer that is option b will be the correct answer mentions that for a finite duration bounded signal the roc is always the entire s plane and as long as roc is the entire s plane there is no poles for this particular signal that would mean for a finite duration bounded signal for roc is the entire s plane since roc is the entire s plane the signal will not have any poles therefore no poles for the signals exist that means the answer to this question will be option a now let us try solving the last question from uh, signals and systems uh, which of the following is true if m and n are non-zero integers remember m and n are mentioned as integers and p and q are non-zero real numbers p and q are real numbers where m is not equal to n and p is not equal to q he is given us uh, four options out of which which is true you will have to choose so uh, remember m and n here are integers so let us try to expand the first uh, option the first option would mean 1 by pi sine of m theta into sine of n theta d theta which again is where m and n are integers uh, sine a sine b will be half of cos of a minus b minus cos of a plus b so this is half of half means 1 by 2 has come out cos of a minus b m minus n theta d theta minus half of uh, 0 to pi itself cos of a plus b that is cos of m plus theta d theta remember here m and n are integers where therefore m minus n is also an integer m plus n is also an integer now what is integration integration is graphically nothing but area under the curve so this is nothing but area under the cos curve in the interval 0 to pi this is also an area under the cos curve in the interval 0 to pi for any cos curve within the interval because uh, cos curve within the interval 0 to pi if you observe the positive area will always be equal to the negative area for a cos curve uh, in the interval 0 to pi positive area will always be equal to the negative area so for that matter this integration will result in equal positive and negative area so that is what is written here also in the interval 0 to pi positive area of the cos curve is equal to the negative area of the cos curve so this E integration which is graphically nothing but the area will evaluate to 0 because positive area is equal to negative area so that is the reason this particular say the same integral this which is equal to the area of the cos curve in the interval 0 to pi will evaluate to 0 so which of the following is true was asked option a itself evaluates to be true so the answer to this question will be option a